Okay, for task 7 you're going to create an isometric drawing of a train uh, very similar to the one that you can see in front of you here. Now this one's been constructed using Techsoft Designer and I'm going to show you some of the things that you need to know in order to be able to do that. Um, if you try and stick to the sizes as close as the one that you've been given as an example then you'll find life much easier. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to open up a, a new page first of all just to show you some of the things that we can do on this one. So. I'm going to open up my blank template to start with. There's my template. I'm going to open that one up. I'm going to save that. Call this Wooden Toy 2. And we're ready to go. Now I need to change the name down here later on for the template, but I'm not going to do that for the moment. I'm going to switch on my grid. And I'm going to change my grid, if you remember how to do that, to isometric. So we're ready to start. Now, what I need to be able to do is to use a technique called crating. And what crating does is it allows me to create kind of rectangular shapes that later on I'm going to put more spherical shapes inside of. I'll show you what that mean, I mean by that. I'm going to choose my parallelogram, um, draw a parallelogram tool, and I'm going to switch my line so that I've got a thin line, a fine line rather, and I'm going to change the color to red. Okay, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing a bit better. Okay, this is basically what I mean by creating. So the bottom of my train is going to look something like this. I think it was about 1, 2, 3, 4, about 50 millimeters this way. And I'll make this size up for now, pretty much like this. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm creating my base shape. Okay, on top of that, I've got the... Um, the kind of steam train part and that was pretty much that shape okay it was 3 by 3 or 30 by 30 and we'll say that the length of it was something like that now what I want to do is inside that red line or those red lines I want to use that as guidelines for putting my actual real shapes in so for instance if I want to make the steam train part I'm going to select a different um, tool. I'm going to go for this one which draws an ellipsoid bezier to fit inside the parallelogram. Sounds like a really fancy word. Basically means it's going to create an ellipse for me. But my ellipse is going to be isometric. So I'm going to choose a thick this time and a, a black as the color. And I'm going to just do the same sort of thing. I'm going to drag from corner to corner and downwards. And now you'll see as long as I keep it inside my red lines before I click, it creates the sphere shape for me, the ellipse shape for me. I'm going to do the same the other end. I'm going to drag downwards. So basically that's the two ends of my steam train tube, the, the bit that goes at the front of the train. Now obviously they should be joined together. And this is where you're going to have to be a little bit careful because what you're going to need to do, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more again, is you're going to need to be able to switch your grid lock on and off all the time. And it gets a little bit confusing with all the different lines everywhere, which is why we're using thin red lines for construction, but we're going to use darker black lines for actually drawing the, the real lines, the ones that we're going to want to keep later on. So I'm going to take my grid lock off, and I'm just going to go pretty much from here to here. Now I've still got my isometric lines to help me, but I'm actually doing this more freehand now, so I'm not actually relying on the grid lock of any sort. I'm just doing this by eye. Okay, now what you can see is that although I've drawn the kind of shape I want, it looks like it's see-through. Now we don't want it to be see-through, we want it to be solid. So there are certain lines on here I wouldn't be able to see. So for example, this line along here, I wouldn't be able to see that one. Okay, and I certainly wouldn't be able to see these red lines later on. Now I'm going to show you how to get rid of some of these things now. You don't need to do this at this point in the drawing, you could do this later on. Okay, but I'm going to show you how it works now. So for instance, I want to get rid of this curve here on the inside of this black one, but at the moment this is one big object. So if I select it and hit delete, I'm going to delete everything. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be a little bit sneaky, I'm going to draw a couple of little lines. I'm just going to cut a line across here, and you'll see why in a minute, just a little short one. I'm going to do the same on the other side by here, I'm just going to cut a line across there. Okay, what I'm saying is I'm cutting my shape into half, so I need this part of the curve but I don't need this part. Now I can go down to here to delete any and if I choose this option delete part of an object I can go back in now and I can click on and get rid of 
the parts of the line I no longer need and I can even get rid of the little lines that I had in the first place that were helping me cut that shape so now you can see I've got this back curve which is accurately incorrect and I've got my front one which I can see I could obviously go in and I could delete the red parts if I didn't want them now I can either use this tool or I could actually just use my selection tool and grab the red lines that I no longer need and hit my spacebar and delete them out of the way can okay, you see it starts to tidy up my drawing I can still see these ones here because I don't want to get rid of my base one yet so I could come back to this delete any and get rid of those okay so you can see this is how you build up a drawing okay now the hardest part of this drawing is probably putting the wheels on so I'm just going to show you very quickly how we do the wheels and this is a similar kind of technique that we're going to use I'm going to switch my grid lock back on again I'm going to go back to my parallelogram tool and I'm going to switch back to my fine line in red so this is all doing what's called grid lines it's helping me by creating my object I'm going to make my wheel 30 by 30 in size so there's the front of my of my wheel and all I'm going to do in there is I'm going to draw two of these so I'm going to draw another one which is 10 millimeters away so it looks like there's one here and there's one there okay I'm going to switch back now to my parallelogram um, bezier one for doing the, the curved wheels and I'm going to switch back to my line style of thick and my color of black and I'm going to say okay I'm going to do the same thing as I did before I'm going to go corner to corner and down okay and I'm going to do the same on the back corner to corner and down okay so I can see the front of my wheel and the back of my wheel but obviously again it looks like it's see-through and there's bits that I don't want there so I'm gonna get rid of those and I'm gonna do the similar sort of thing as I did before in fact this time I'm actually gonna get rid of the, sh the my red lines now I don't need them any longer so I'm gonna delete those out of the way so that they don't confuse me too much and I'm gonna draw I'm gonna take my grid lock off zoom in ever so slightly more so I can see a bit better what I'm doing and I'm going to go back to my line drawing tool here and I'm going to go from here to here I'm sure you're getting the hang of how it works now here to here and again I've got some lines I can now get rid of now if I want to be careful I can draw my little cut lines across to make sure I'm not taking more than I need so I want to get rid of this line sorry I want to get rid of I put that in the wrong place totally let's get rid of that let's do control Z and undo it I want to get rid of this back line here so I should be able to do that without even having to draw any smaller lines in and I'll try this one here and this one here and suddenly I've got a tire I'm going to zoom out ever so slightly now what I want to do is I need three of those so I'm going to actually select it all by dragging over and while it's selected I'm going to group it now I can either go to edit and group or I can do control and G that now puts all of these things together as one object and very simply I can do control C to copy and control V to create two more of them okay so all we need to do is we need to reposition the copied ones and, and I'm doing this very quickly now but you get the idea you need to have a look at where the bottom of these are so they line up and try and get them positioned in the right positions where you want them along the length as well now obviously the front ones are a little bit more straightforward the back ones more complicated you need to think about where this actually will be so if you looked at the actual grid lines here you can pretty much work out where the center of this one should be so again I could move it and I put it roughly where I think it's going to be now I should have the bottom edge of this one lining up which is wrong at the moment so I need to move that further this way okay that's a bit better now that top edge should line up and one thing I can do to try and make life a bit easier is I can actually put this to the back to see if that helps so if I do control and B it sends that object behind now it still looks very complicated there it looks very congested with too much information so what I would do is I'll be coming back into this area and I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit more and what I need to do is I need to work out which bits I wouldn't see and which ones I would see now I wouldn't see this bit here because I will see this front face so I can go here delete oops okay that was a good reason now the reason I did that was because I haven't ungrouped my object so I need to select my object and ungroup it first so I can do control and U to ungroup or I can do edit and ungroup now I should be able to go in and get rid of just the individual bits that I don't want so I wouldn't see that one I wouldn't see that one I wouldn't see that part 
I would see this here, but I wouldn't see that little tiny bit in the middle there. And I can see later on, when I fill in some of my, my black lines, I'll show you what I mean by that. When I come up to here, and I start going across this way, these lines here are also going to start covering up some of the things that I want to get rid of. So again, I would come into here, I would go for my delete any option, and I'd start getting rid of the little bits that I no longer can see. And quite quickly, you can see how that would work. And this is how you build up your drawing. Now at the moment, this one is obviously a long way from completion. And I've done that very quickly. But those are the techniques that you need to use. So you need to use the thin or the fine red line to construct where things are going to be positioned. You need to switch to the thicker lines when you're drawing the, the real lines that you want to use. You're switching between using basically the parallelogram tool or the bezier into a parallel group tool to do the curved edges. And then when you're getting rid of things, you're using the delete part of an object option. And sometimes you might need to group or ungroup. And sometimes you might need to put things either behind or in front using Control B and Control F. A lot of information there for you to take in. But if you work through this steadily, you'll find that you'll be able to accomplish it quite easily. Good luck.